Victoria, what are you doing in my chair? <laughs> Pondering Potter. Of course, it's Tuesday. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving my chair back. You're you welcome. and you looks like you have a friend there. What's his name? Zeus. Zeus. Zeus is a snake, so I I guess um he's your friend. Of course he's my friend. Okay. So today we're talking about um Tuesday being uh Chamber of Secrets. We're at the very end. Wow. Yep. And this chapter sixteen through eighteen and we have a very exciting conclusion. Now, I'm not going to go over all of it, assuming you've read it all, but we figure out who the monster is, which I'm sure looked a little bit like your friend here, Zeus. So he's a snake. Harry gets into the chamber. He saves Ginny. He defeats Tom Riddle, who is who? We find Voldemort. out. Voldemort. That person who won't be named. And everyone gets back to normal. Hermione gets back to normal and everything. So, a lot's going on in this exciting conclusion. Um, but, as we've been pondering Potter for the past uh, little bit, I see some qualities that are very interesting. So, first of all, we find out that Harry is very loyal, mm -hmm. right? So, he talks about Dumbledore being the greatest wizard. He's brave. I mean, who would face a snake that's like 20 feet or whatever by himself with like nothing? Not me. And he's resourceful, right? So, he gets the, the, um, the sword... And, uh, you know, he, he tries to defeat him. But we also see some flaws in Harry. Zeus, we see some flaws in Harry, which you might like, which are lousy planning. He has no plan for what he's going to do. He's just like, oh, I want to go save him. Let's go. Right, exactly. And he tries to take the knucklehead uh, professor, who is a fake. And even after he knows he's a fake, he takes him with him. A complete and total lack of awareness. It's like my brother would say, duh, Harry, Tom Riddle's not going to help you. It takes, like, at the very end for him to finally figure out that Tom Riddle's trying to hurt him, right? And then, still, he has a reluctance to rely on, rely on others. So he's in the chamber, the rocks fall down on him, and what does Harry do? I'll be back. Wait for me! And Ron's like, okay, I'll try to remove the rocks and help you, Harry, and he keeps going. So... All these things, again, you know, the hero here is uh, someone who has these great kind of, uh, you know, great attributes, but also has all these negative kind of flaws as well. But we also get an interesting discovery here, which has to do with your friend here. I don't know if it's Mr. Mr. I guess it's Mr. Zeus. Hey, Mr. Zeus. Which leads me to several questions about snakes. And... One thing I was just wondering, maybe you could help me with some of these questions, is why is it in the book here that the author, J.K. Rowling, is that it? Why is it that a snake is chosen to be the bad animal or the evil one? I wonder about that. Do you have any thoughts about that? Let me ask him. Probably because of Adam and Eve. What? But... Snakes today are still pretty cool. Well, that makes sense to me as far as the story goes. But another question I have is, is it important to the story that um, Harry can understand snakes? I mean, it doesn't really ha help him in any way. I mean, just because he can hear snakes, I mean, actually fighting the snakes, he didn't really understand what the snake was saying anyway. So I wonder if it really helped him a lot. Do you have any thoughts about that? So, snakes like him are totally cool, so it seems like they should take the main role, he says. Oh, well, that makes sense to me, too. I guess. Well, he has all the answers. I'm glad we had Zeus here today. Yeah, but he sure does think pretty highly of himself. Gosh. All right, well, so now I'm wondering that um, Harry can talk to snakes. I'm kind of wondering if other animals will be able to communicate with uh, people in the book, like owls or... Or rats, or is it snakes just so special by themselves that they're the only ones that, you know, they're called out to be able to secretly communicate with people? Hmm, I don't know. I'll see. Hmm, interesting. Well, he says he doesn't care. He says, <laughs> who cares? 
Snakes are the most important. <laughs> Snakes are the most important. <laughs> they have the most important insight in everything, he said. Oh, I, I guess that's his opinion. So maybe Zeus can help me with one more question, which is, what do you think the basilisk, the snake, thought of Harry when he met him? Oh, God. This one's going to be tricky. Zeus, come here. Hmm. Interesting, Zeus. Okay. What do you say? Probably another victim, but perhaps that snake didn't really know what to think for sure. Oh. So, Karen, thank you for bringing Zeus today and understanding what he's saying. Uh, I think his perspective is really important. So, to include a question I have for the group as we ponder Harry Potter and his character is, is Harry Potter really brave or is he more foolhardy and just gets lucky? In this part of the story, he wanted to get Ginny back, so he felt a deep desire to do that, but he had no plan. He had no resources. He had no exit strategy. Who does something that daring without an exit strategy? I don't know. Do you want me to ask Zeus again? Uh, no, that's fine. Zeus has done enough work tonight. He says he's really mad about that. About no exit strategy? Mm -hmm. Well, what we know now is that um, there are plenty of ways to get into trouble. But it can also lead to opportunity, as we find out with Harry, to do great things. So thank you for listening again and listening to what Zeus has to say and his perspective on this. And Karina, thank you for interpreting. And we look forward to your comments and your videos. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye.